I'm Patrick Andrews. I'm Catherine Andrews, and you're tuned in to Oneness Talk Radio. One world. One voice. Expand expand your your vision. Your vision. Welcome to Spirit's Journey on Oneness Talk Radio with your hosts, Patrick and Catherine Andres. Join us each week as we explore a wide range of metaphysical topics such as dreams, astrology, intuitive readings, and life purpose. You'll receive practical guidance so you can live your sweetest life. Learn more about what we do at intuitiveschool.com and connect with us on Facebook at Spirit's Journey Radio. Hello again. Welcome back to Spirit's Journey on Oneness Talk Radio. We are your hosts. I'm Patrick Andres. And I'm Catherine Andres. We're happy to be with you sharing this time and thank you for being here. We want you to be a part of our conversation. So please go to Spirit's Journey Radio on Facebook and follow our page so that we can hear what you have to say. We may even be able to share your comments or questions on the air. And at the end of the first half hour, I'll be sharing more astrological forecast information for October, so stay tuned. Today's show is about the power of a new thought. Have you ever found yourself at a place in your life where you just didn't know where to turn next? I know I have. Me too. Sometimes we reach places in our lives where things just don't make sense anymore. Sometimes things seem to be going along really well, and then you wake up the next day and think, what the heck just happened? It's especially these times when we need to remember the power of our minds to create what we want in our lives. Our minds are designed to create whatever we desire. All we need to do is remember how to access it. That's right, Patrick. Whenever we find ourselves in a situation that we don't really want to be in, we are just one thought away from a new reality. Is it really that easy? Yes, but it may not happen instantly. I've heard many people say that they wish they could manifest their desires instantly, but then one day I realized that I'm really glad we can't do that yet. I mean, think about it. How disciplined are most people with their thinking that you would want all of their thoughts manifesting instantly all over the place? That is so true. I know plenty of people who regretted saying something right after they said it, including me. Um, Imagine if their thoughts were becoming real right before our eyes. Yikes. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't have whatever it is that we desire. It just means that we have to be patient while things are moving around for us in the physical world. The same laws of inertia that work in physics actually work the same way with the energy of our thoughts. When we set a new thought into motion, we have to give it some extra energy in the beginning to get it going. Then we have to keep giving it more attention and energy as we go along to keep it going. If we are persistent, though, we don't give up. We really can create amazing things. Yeah, you know, I'm a writer, and I've had that experience when I was writing my first book, Soul Choices, Six Paths to Find Your Life Purpose. I, um, I had gotten the idea to combine different forms of self-analysis, like palmistry, iris analysis, um, past lives, all those kinds of things, uh, to really understand what our life purpose is. And the book took a long time. Actually, the longest part of the book was the editing process and I really had to keep moving to get through that editing phase because I'm not one for details and so I just constantly had luckily I had an editor and I constantly had to make myself make appointments with the editor so we could go through the book Um, but I really did push through it and I, I kept focused on the end result which was getting the book published and it did happen And so all in all, uh, I learned a lot from that experience about the power of the mind, the power of having a goal or a desire, and allowing that to keep the mind moving forward. My experience writing my first book was pretty similar. I think I first had the idea for Owner's Manual for the Mind about 10 years before I actually had the experience of holding the first copy of the book in my hand. But I was persistent, I worked, I brought that book into reality. The amazing thing is that it all started with just one idea. You know, when I graduated high school, I studied architecture, and later when I was thinking about it, I realized that what really drew me to architecture was that an architect can start with just one simple idea and they can develop that idea until it becomes this gigantic building. A friend of mine who studied architecture with me one time said that his favorite lyric was from Yes. It was, we are the architects of life. And 
I realize now that we are really all architects of our lives, that we each have the power to create anything that we desire just with the power of one new thought. It doesn't matter if we are creating a new job, a new company, a new relationship, or even a new income level. It all begins with that first new idea. And so we don't want to mislead the audience into thinking that we could just sit around and think one thought all day and expect the universe to hand deliver what we want to our doorstep like an Amazon order. Uh, I find that I have to put quite a bit of effort into manifesting my thoughts at times to bring them into my reality. I mean, we do live in the physical world, and this is the slowest of all the dimensions. And so we have to be very patient a lot of times because, of course, when we're in the spirit world, we manifest instantly. Your thoughts are instant manifestations, but in the physical world, in order to manifest our thoughts, it takes a lot of perspiration and effort. That's very true. It all really goes back to what I was talking about earlier about inertia. The inertia is a law that is true in physics. It's a, it's a law that is true in manifesting using the mechanics of the mind. Sometimes we believe we can create a desire and our past choices have already led us to a point where most of the things that we need for that desire are within easy reach. It's those times that we experience things that seem like almost instant manifestations. It seems instant, but it's not really instant because you've already put the pieces in a place. You've done the work to get ready. Uh, you know, Jesus in his text said to be prepared. When you're ready, then things happen. Okay. Other times though, we haven't built all the pieces that we need. It's those times that sometimes we even make need to make changes within ourselves to be able to receive what we desire. Those are the times that takes longer, sometimes even years. And one thing that I've found people talk about is how they get distracted along the way. And sometimes even the people around them tell them that they can't have what they want. And that, that's really frustrating. I know that's happened to me. And I just wonder, what would you recommend for people, Patrick, when they get distracted or they find naysayers who say, no, nah, you can't have that? Well, that's where the power of focus comes in. We all need to learn it at some point, how to bring our attention back to what we want whenever we get pulled off course. We need to learn to listen to our inner guidance and to trust what it says. A good example is when we went to the Renaissance Festival last weekend. So my intuition told me that there was a parking space close to the gate, even though the parking lot seemed to be completely full. I decided, though, to put that to the test. So I pulled in. I went around the area right next to the gate. The cool part about this story, though, is that you actually became my naysayer in this story. Because... Oh, I know. <laughs> so you challenged me because you said that you didn't want to spend half an hour driving around because it looked like there were no spots. And visually, yes, it looked like the parking lot was completely full. I could have given up at that point, but I didn't because, you know, initially I have to admit I was afraid of being proven wrong because I was putting my intuition to the test. But instead, I chose to treat it like an experiment. So I just had fun with it. I continued to drive around in the parking lot just to satisfy my curiosity. That way I was able to relax. I was no longer really attached to what happened. And would you like to share what happened next? No, oh, you can't wait for me to do that. So you found your spot right by the front gate and you were so proud of yourself and I was too. <laughs> so it's amazing though that I've been practicing and teaching these laws for most of my life really over 20 years I still get a kick out of seeing the mind in action so what would you recommend to our listeners who need to work on developing that kind of focus that you're talking about and not giving up well, it all begins really with awareness. Awareness is the key because without it, we can't really use most of the other abilities of our minds. I should say higher abilities because we all have instinct, just like animals. We all have memory, which we form habits with. The problem is if we don't have awareness, we are really just operating from instinct and habit. Essentially, we're living the life of an animal and we all have a much higher calling than that. We're all born to be creators. A simple practice that you can do is to write down one or two desires that you wanna create Post it somewhere that you can see it often. This could be in the mirror in your bathroom. It could be on the wall in your bedroom, the refrigerator. These are just some examples. You pick the place where you can see it frequently. Look at it several times a day. Reaffirm each time that you still want this desire. Next, increase your awareness. Check in with yourself throughout the day. See what kinds of thoughts you're having. Write down your desires. 
writing down your desires increases your commitment and this may bring up challenging thoughts. Sometimes you may actually have people in your life express these doubts for you, just like those naysayers that we were talking about. When this happens, acknowledge that it is a distraction. The power of focus begins with your ability to bring your attention back to what you want. So when you're challenged, one thing you do is say, this is not my truth. At that time, you focus on the discretion. Then you say, this is my truth. Focus on what you want. You can say this to yourself out loud or to yourself. It's your choice. I love that, Patrick. I think it's really powerful. Uh, I'm actually going to do that uh, more often. I do it sometimes, but I realize uh, I should just have that written on a note card and be ready to say that. Yeah, it is, it is powerful. And it's really just the beginning. There's really so much more we can do with our minds once we get the ball rolling. So is there anything else they can do? Share some more. Sure. The next thing is listen. So keep listening to your inner guidance, your inner voice. Now, you can learn to tell the difference between your inner and outer thoughts over time. To begin with, just be aware that your inner guidance is like a whisper. Sometimes it's so subtle that we barely even know it's there. That's why it gets drowned out so easily by all the other distracting thoughts just yelling in our head. Possibly the greatest challenge that we each face is the challenge of taming our mind. It takes practice, it takes perseverance, but we're all capable of taming our mind and directing our mind to do what we want it to do. Once we get it down, though, we need to be persistent. We need to keep going. We can't go back to the way it was before. So I always describe it as being a lot like exercise. My dad started walking years ago to help strengthen his heart. He never stops because he knows that he needs to do it to keep going. If he lets himself stop even once, he knows it's easier to let him, himself skip some other time next time down the road before long he might even drop his practice altogether so he does it every day rain or shine now the strength of the mind works in much the same way you could say that the mind works like the body but i really think it's more accurate to say that the body is a reflection of the mind i love that because i know a lot of us including myself first thing in the morning i think about doing some exercise i got to do my yoga stretches you know, other people might go running, but we don't always think about, well, what exercises do I need to use for my mind? And so I think it's a great idea to incorporate some kind of mental activity that we can do every day, because like you said, the mind is like a muscle and we need to keep strengthening it and working it every day. So how can you sum up all of this information about, you know, the power of a thought so that it's easier for the listeners to remember? You really can break it down into just three easy steps. Vision, focus, and listen. So first, create a vision of what you want. Write this down somewhere so that you can see it every day. Second, focus on your vision and bring your attention back to your truth whenever you're aware that you have become distracted. Third, listen to your inner thoughts as well as the thoughts of those around you to be aware of the thoughts that support your desire and those that are undermining your desires. So remember these three Simple things, vision, focus, and listen. That is so powerful, Patrick. Um, I was just going to share a story when I got distracted and what I did about it. So uh, we had actually uh, purchased a rental property, thought, oh, this is going to be a really fun project. Well, it, it turned out to be quite the opposite. It, it was a big headache and a total distraction from our path. So every time I would go to write a metaphysical article or work on a book or work with a client, it seemed that the renter in this property was calling with some problem. Toilet's plugged up, door doesn't work, you name it. We dealt with everything over a year. And so about halfway through, I realized that this was going to ruin my life if I didn't do something about it. So what we did was, at least what I did, was began envisioning this current renter finding a new place, uh, one that was more suitable for her. I started envisioning us uh, fixing up the property and selling it. And I held on to this vision and uh, within six months, it all came to fruition. And uh, it really made getting through that year with that property a lot easier because we had a, we knew what we wanted. And we, we just, every time something came up, you know, a repair, a problem with the renter, we just focused, okay, we want her to find a new suitable place and then we want to sell it. 
That's for sure. Yeah, I was there living that whole experience too, and I remember every minute. But we want to hear from you, our listeners, so please go to Spirits Journey Radio on Facebook and tell us your story. It can be a success or a failure because we can all learn from both. Please share a story of a desire that you had, the distractions that you met along the way, and how you dealt with it. We might even be able to share your story on a future episode, of course, with your permission. Now, Catherine, you came prepared with some more astrological updates, right? I did, Patrick. I know everybody's excited to hear about what the month of October is going to bring planetary-wise. So we've got some cool stuff. I'm going to begin with the new moon in Libra on October 8th. So a new moon basically is an opportunity to set new goals, set intentions, to bring your desires into light. It's like a new beginning. That's why it It's called a new moon. A lot of people will do ceremonies, visualizations during a new moon. So I encourage you all, if you are inclined to do so, on October 8th. So the new moon is in Libra, and Libra is the sign of beauty, harmony, relationships, balance. It's the scales, so we're looking for balance. Uh, The negative of Libra is difficulty making decisions. So we may actually find ourselves being a little bit indecisive with this new moon. So before the new moon hits, I would encourage you to make a list of some of your desires and get clear on them so that when the new moon arrives, you're not still indecisive about what it is that you really want. Also, wherever in your astrology chart that you have the sign Libra, that's most likely where you're going to sense this new moon. You're going to feel a surge of energy of like, I want to create something new. Or you may also feel in that area of your life that this is where you need to find some balance and some more harmony. So for example, um, Libra is in my sixth house. This is the house of service. It's the house of health. And so I'm already recognizing that I need to find some more balance in my life between work and exercise and family time. When you have your own business, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that, that you find yourself working all the time because you're passionate about it and you love it. But there has to come a point where you find some balance and you stop your work, you pay attention to family, you do some exercise, whatever balances you out. So that is, that's my goal for the new moon. Share with me what yours is on Facebook. Now, we're going to talk about another really important event, which is Venus retrograde. So first, let me explain what a retrograde planet is. When a planet goes retrograde, it slows down the motion so much to where it appears that the planet is actually moving backwards. Well, it it doesn't move backwards, but in relationship to the other planets, the motion has slowed down to the extent where it looks like it's moving backwards. So when a planet goes retrograde, all the energies of that planet go inward. And it's a real opportunity to go inward and process the energies of that planet. So with Venus going retrograde, Venus is all about beauty and harmony and relationships. It's about pleasures. So this is an opportunity for us to go inward and reflect on our relationships. For example, is there somebody you've been neglecting that you need to give attention to? Go take a friend out to lunch. And more importantly, what about the relationships with ourselves? Have we been neglecting ourselves? I think that's very easy to do and all the hustle and bustle of the world is to get so distracted we forget our own needs, our own body care. And I actually had a a big wake-up call with that because I've had a persistent low back problem that comes up every now and then. And, you know, I haven't really done as much work on it as I could. And so a couple days ago, I had this really bad knee pain, and I thought, okay, what's this? So I I tried a new practice called Twina Acupuncture. It's really amazing if you've never tried it. I encourage it. And anyway, after the session, the practitioner said, well, your knee problem was coming from your lower back. And I had to laugh, which I knew it was true. So that that was my wake-up call, and so I am committed to more self-care for my lower back. So share with me, what is your area of self-care that you're going to be focused on while Venus is retrograde? 
And Venus only goes retrograde every couple years. And it's going to be retrograde for 40 days about. So this time it's going to be retrograde um, beginning on October 5th through November 16th. So we have a good chunk of time here to work with some of these Venusian concepts and ideas. Sometimes when this planet goes retrograde, we might feel blocked or frustrated because things are just not moving. And so rather than try to push against that frustration, I really encourage you to go within and process everything about relationships that you can. It's not a time to go out and take action. That happens when it goes direct in November. But now is the time to, you know, meditate on your relationships. Uh, Maybe you write a letter to somebody, but you wait to send it until after it goes direct. Those are some things that you can do. Now, to further understand this Venus retrograde, we can look at what sign Venus is in. Venus is going to begin retrograde in the the sign of Scorpio. And then later it will switch to Libra. So as we know, Scorpio loves to get in there and dig deep and investigate and get to the bottom of things. And Scorpio has a lot to do with our finances. So what I would say is this Venus retrograde, while it's in Scorpio, is an awesome time to investigate our finances. For example, if you're like me, you don't really like to balance your checkbook or reconcile your bank statement. So since Scorpio loves to, you know, investigate and find things, you can use this energy to, for example, go reconcile your bank accounts, find out where that, you know, discrepancy is in the numbers. Where's that missing purchase, that missing entry? Scorpio loves that. Also, just begin questioning yourself about your finances. Do you like the way you handle them? Um, What is your attitude towards money? Are you open abundant to it? Or do you feel you repel money because you have some thoughts that money is bad? You know, we all have so many thoughts and attitudes around money that it definitely highlights uh, the need often to go in and question our attitudes about money. A lot of times when we do that, we really free up a part of ourselves to receive. So that's what we can do while Venus is in Scorpio. Now, later on, it's going to move into the sign of Libra. So Libra, as we know, is about relationships, it's about harmony, it's about balance. So now we're going to really be questioning our relationships. Are, is there balance there? Um, have we been fair? Uh, it's also a blending of Scorpio and Libra would be looking at the karma that we have built up in our relationships. Now, I know this is a really deep subject, guys, but it's huge in terms of, you know, our life path because we're here to undo or work out our karma. And most of our karma seriously is triggered by other people. With this Libra Scorpio mix, it's a great time to look at, you know, what are the webs that we've woven with other people? It brings to mind the whole political field and what's going on with the Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh. You know, the Scorpio is digging up stuff from his past, you know, 30 years ago, they're finding things about him they're bringing out. With the Libra, it's bringing out balance in relationships. So that is no coincidence that it's coinciding with the the Venus retrograde. On the other hand, uh, we also have an aspect where Venus is making a square to Mars this month. That can lead to a lot of sexual attention or sexual tension. So you all can figure out how to deal with that. Um, In addition, we have Venus making a trine to the planet Neptune. This is an awesome aspect for all you romantic folks out there. If you've been avoiding, you know, that candlelight dinner, that weekend away, whatever romantic ideas you've had or you've put on hold, now is the time because these planets are totally supporting romanticism. Also, creativity. You know, Neptune is that planet that allows us to dream, 
to, you know, imagine that we are not just part of this physical world, that we're spiritual beings. And of course, all of our great ideas, as Patrick talked about, come from one idea, from the mind. So a lot of times we meditate to tune into those ideas. I often get great ideas when I sleep and I wake up with a new idea. So have a notepad ready so that you can write down some of these ideas because Venus trying Neptune is going to make us all just a little bit more sensitive to ideas, feelings, insights, intuitions. It's also going to bring out a lot of compassion. And and I think that's something that we definitely need right now is some more compassion uh, to help others. It's going to bring out idealism. A lot of times people are this time of year, there's, you know, gearing up before the holidays and helping people. So, you know, as this compassion comes in, we can think about, you know, what group of people or who really needs my help? Who can I shower my compassion on? And uh, also a little bit more difficult aspect this month is the sun and the moon in Libra are squaring Pluto. Okay, so everybody's got to love Pluto, which is about power. It's about compulsions. So this is really asking us to look at where are we compulsive? Uh, Where are we out of control? And the great thing about Pluto is that it helps us transform. And so because Pluto is an aspect with the Libra, the sun and the moon in Libra, this is an opportunity to transform our relationships, folks. What needs changing? What do we need to let go of? You know, are we attached to being right in our relationships or are we attached to fulfillment and harmony? Those are some big choices that we have to make. All right, folks, so we've basically got until November 16th to really work with this Venus retrograde. So share with us on Facebook what you are processing in your relationships. We would love to hear from you and work with that Libra and that Scorpio and let us know and have an awesome month. So it looks like we are at that time. We are at the bottom of the hour. And so the next half hour of our show is going to be in Espanol. So if you habla Espanol or if you would like to learn Spanish or work on your Spanish, you can continue on with us for the next half hour where Catherine will be conducting the show in Spanish. So I have a little fun fact. What's that, Patty? So I'm aware that uh, many of our listeners may be too young to really understand where the reference the bottom of the hour comes from, but it actually goes back to an analog clock. So if you check out your clock and you watch the minute hand and it points to the bottom, that's when you know it's the end of the first half of our show. Cool. So please uh, look us up on intuitiveschool.com. Stay connected with us on Spirits Journey Radio on Facebook. And until then, we look forward to seeing you the next half hour or next week. See y'all. Bye. Oneness Talk Radio. Hip, fresh, and fun. Discover your positivity portal 24-7 and experience unique talk radio from around the planet, perfectly mixed with music that enchants your soul. At a moment where everyone is being challenged to stay awake and release fear, OnenessTalkRadio.com is here to remind us all of our divine mastery. Imagine the activating power of intentional oneness and universal healing available at any time. With shows in multiple languages and formats, relax and explore. Our commitment to uplifting music from superstars and fresh talent combined with your favorite shows will inspire you to stay all day and soak in the gift of connection. Once you experience our signature oneness moment, in only three to five minutes, your heart will expand as miracles unfold. OneNessTalkRadio.com. One world, one voice. Expand your vision. This is a Oneness Moment with India on Oneness Talk Radio. Expand your vision. Your vision. We still live in a world that thrives on people's insecurities, but the truth is you don't need fixing and you're not broken. The pain, the tears are symptoms that you have journeyed as a human. So healing is not about fixing you. It is just coming home to your eternal truth. So allow your awakening to be a celebration. 
They're remembering that you are sacred. Your past, your future, your present, your ideas, your feelings, your victory, your mistakes, all of it is sacred. Every breath you take expands the universe. So as you're truly sacred, it also means that you are important. It matters not where you are in your journey or in the world, what your bank account looks like, how much you weigh, how many people like or dislike you. Those circumstances that you may feel are important right now, they do not take away from your worth. So just imagine how would your life shift if you would know this to be true, if you could go about every day looking for an opportunity to celebrate you, to celebrate your sacredness, to celebrate your experience as a human. The understanding of good and bad is a concept of a brain, is the concept of density. The truth is everything we experience is just that, an experience. And you have the greatest power in your hand to shift any experience. And that is the power of choice. You get to decide in this minute right now that you will live every single moment honoring the truth of who you are and the truth of this experience. Being willing to see the divine not only in yourself, but in those around you. So let today be the perfect moment for you where you get to choose where you get to choose yourself where you get to choose your joy and your amazing sacred journey as a human you are worthy you're so loved and the universe cannot wait for you to remember how precious and sacred you are namaste Learn more about India at her host page right here at onenesstalkradio.com. Bienvenidos al programa El Viaje del Espíritu con su locutor Catalina Andreas. Únense a nosotros cada semana cuando hablaremos sobre una gran variedad de temas, incluyendo los sueños, la astrología, vidas pasadas, tu propósito de la vida y las relaciones íntimas. También ofreceremos consejos prácticos para aplicar esta información en tu vida. Buenos días, mi gente. Aquí estoy, Catalina Andreas, con el show de Spirit's Journey. Hoy vamos a hablar del tema de la concentración mental. Es un tema muy importante porque hoy en día con todas las electrónicas, el televisor, hay muchas distracciones que están interrumpiendo nuestro ciclo de pensar, nuestras tareas, nuestros trabajos, en todo. Entonces es una habilidad que hoy en día no viene fácilmente. Es algo en que tenemos que trabajar. Entonces, eh, al final de la hora también voy a hablar un poquito de la astrología por el mes de octubre. Entonces, quédense allí. Vamos a empezar a hablar de las distracciones internas y también las distracciones externas. ¿Cuáles son más difíciles a encontrar o resolver? Yo creo que son las distracciones internas, pero primero las distracciones externas son, por ejemplo, una llamada telefónica, compromisos, uh, un correo electrónico que llega a tu teléfono, notic notificaciones del móvil, mensajes, una persona viene inesperada a visitar. Estos son eh, ejemplos de distracciones externas. A veces son fuera de nuestro control. Entonces tenemos que decidir cómo vamos a, tenemos que decidir qué vamos a hacer con esa distracción. Luego, el otro tipo de distracción son internas. Por ejemplo, los pensamientos, los deseos, uh, ideas que tenemos. 
siempre hay pensamientos que están pasando por mi cabeza. Entonces, lo que yo hago es yo tengo un papel y un lápiz conmigo. Y entonces, si tengo una buena idea que me llega, yo lo escribo en el papel. Así que no me lo voy a olvidar. Y al mismo tiempo, yo doy caso a la idea. En, y después estoy más tranquila y puedo seguir con mi trabajo o lo que estoy haciendo. Bueno, estos son los dos tipos de distracciones que primero se tiene que determinar y es, si es un patrón, por ejemplo, siempre recibes llamadas telefónicas cuando estás trabajando, a lo mejor puede ser que vas a cortar el teléfono o si recibes, por ejemplo, una visita de un vecino a las 5 cada día y es la hora que deberías estar trabajando, tendrás que arreglar con esa persona otra hora para la visita. Bueno, eh, todo comienza con un pensamiento. Eh, y entonces, si nosotros seguimos los pensamientos, puede ser que media hora pase, estamos perdidos en la mente. Entonces, los pensamientos, si son muy importantes, los van a escribir en un papel, como yo le dije en mi ejemplo. Si no, ustedes tienen que dejar pasar esos pensamientos. Y si es algo muy importante, lo vas a apuntar en un papel y ya sigues con tu trabajo. Ahorita les quiero compartir unas técnicas para concentrar, ¿ok? Estas son cosas que yo he hecho durante mucho tiempo que me, me han ayudado bastante. Eh, primero les quiero explicar que la concentración es como un músculo, igual que en tu cuerpo. Hay que trabajar diariamente con la concentración para fortalecer esta habilidad. Entonces, eh, los hábitos que te voy a compartir ahora son maneras que puede usar para mejorar, fortalecer la concentración, como hacer ejercicio diario. Esos son ejercicios. Primero, eh, hay que despejar la cabeza. So, si te quieres concentrar en algo muy importante, tienes que escribir en un papel todo lo que está en tu cabeza. Por ejemplo, una lista de lo que tienes que comprar en la tienda. Eh, si tienes eh, trabajos en la casa que necesitan terminar antes del domingo, lo van a escribir. Okay. De esta manera puedes de despejar tu cabeza y estos pensamientos no van a estar llamando a la puerta cada cinco minutos porque tú sabes que están en un papel y cuando llegue el tiempo adecuado vas a, com a cumplir con esos trabajos. Ok, esto es número uno. Número dos, cuando se van a trabajar, hacer tareas, lo que sea y necesitas concentración, tienen que buscar el ambiente perfecto. Esto quiere decir, si necesitas luz, siéntete en un lugar que está bien iluminada. Si necesitas uh, un lugar donde no vas a ver a nadie, pues váyase en un un cuarto en, en la casa donde se puede cerrar la puerta y nadie te va a molestar. Um, tú decides la, el ambiente ideal y así vas creando ese ambiente y entonces es como cuando llegas ahí que tu mente sepa, oh, esto es el tiempo de concentrar. Igual, cuando vas a la cama, ya estás entrenado tu cuerpo para saber que cuando te pones en la cama es hora de dormir. Ok, uh, luego, tienen que alejar las distracciones. ¿Qué significa eso? Pues si tienes un teléfono, no lo dejas ahí a tu lado porque es una tentación de contestar el teléfono. Um, si estás trabajando en un lugar en la casa donde hay televisor, no es muy buena idea porque oh, vas a estar pensando en un programa de la televisión. So, distracciones, aléjate de ellos. Okay. Mejor que te vayas a una biblioteca si no te puedes alejar de las distrac distracciones en tu casa. Ok, luego, muy importante es que ustedes duermen lo su suficiente. Yo no te puedo decir los días que he dormido cuatro o cinco horas, no me puedo concentrar para nada. Es porque la mente tiene que estar en buena forma. Y sin eh, horas suficientes de, de sueño, tu cerebro va a estar más distraída. Normalmente, la mayoría de las personas necesitan ocho horas para dormir. 
cada persona es diferente. Entonces, usted tiene que saber cuáles son la, las horas que necesitas para dormir, para que no te quedes irritado o torpe o nervioso, lo que sea. Um, y esto es el, las horas ideal para hacer una buena concentración. Luego, algo muy importante también para la salud es hacer ejercicio. Porque siempre eh, la, el cuerpo necesita exigir hacer ejercicio. Entonces, um, por la mañana lo que yo hago, yo hago es yo voy a caminar con mi perro. Andamos media hora, a veces 45 minutos. Y así me quedo con mucha energía cuando vuelvo, más que antes de ir a, a mi caminata. Uh, además, cuando uno hace ejercicio, es posible que llegue más oxígeno al cerebro. Y así el cerebro se emite lo que se llama endorfinas. Y estos son responsables para la sensación de sentirse bien. Sin ejercicio, eh, hay demasiada energía y a veces la mente se va como un ratón en, en su jaula, ¿verdad? <ríe> Porque el cuerpo quiere hacer ejercicios. También la dieta. Lo que ustedes comen es muy importante para el cerebro. Por ejemplo, si yo estoy comiendo mucho azúcar, se sabe que cuando los niños toman demasiado azúcar no se pueden concentrar en la escuela. Los adultos son iguales. Yo sé si tomo mucho azúcar, quizás por 5 o 10 minutos al principio me siento muy bien con mucha energía, pero luego es un derrote total y me quedo sin energía, muy cansada y mi mente está como, en un, me siento como neblina, no puedo ver, no puedo pensar bien. Entonces, ¿qué se debe de comer? Eh, son porciones de proteína, con grasa buena, por ejemplo, el aguacate es uh, una grasa saludable. Uh, el aceite de oliva es buena. Aceite de coco. Bueno, también un poquito de carbohidrato. Por ejemplo, papas, papas, pan, fideos. No demasiado. También verduras y frutas es bueno también. Mejor que el pan y los fideos. Bueno, cuando yo como así, poquito de, de proteína como pescado, un poquito de arroz y verduras, me siento muy bien. Mi mente se puede enfocar. Entonces, la dieta es una clave importante para la concentración. Luego, yo recomiendo que si necesitas hacer algo que se requiere mucha concentración, que lo hagas por la mañana. ¿Por qué digo eso? Porque la mente, eh, después de haber dormido ocho horas, o lo suficiente por usted, eh, la, la, la mente está muy, tiene mucha energía, se puede enfocar mejor por la mañana que por la tarde. Entonces, yo planeo mi día poniendo las cosas que se requiere creatividad y concentración, los hago por la mañana. Porque, claro, muchos saben, después de comer, al mediodía, mucha gente se quede un poco cansada. Entonces, por la tarde, reservo para actividades que no se requiere tanta creatividad, tanta concentración. Por ejemplo, responder lo, al correo electrónico, pagar unos biles, Uh, cosas así, um, yo soy mejor así, a lo mejor ustedes también. También es muy importante durante el día que, se, que toman un break, ¿ok? Depende cada persona, pero lo normal es por cada hora de trabajo que se descanse unos 10 minutos, y cuando yo digo descanse, eso no significa que van a su teléfono. Uh, un descanse sería de ir al aire libre, tomar un paseo por el jardín, um, beber agua, hacer un, un ejercicio, estirar el cuerpo, hacer uh, un poquito de yoga. Uh, esto es un buen descanso. Y así se siente refrescado y ya puedes volver a su trabajo con más energía y concentrando mejor. Yo tengo un perro, entonces cuando es tiempo de tomar un break, yo saco mi perro afuera 
y caminamos un ratito, yo tiro la pelota, así estoy en el aire libre, puedo respirar bien, el aire fresco, uh, yo tomo un poquito de té o agua y así regreso a mi trabajo. So, estos son mis consejos para tener buena concentración. Ahora, si uno está teniendo dificultad en concentrar después de hacer esas cosas, tengo un poquito más de ideas que voy a compartir con ustedes. Algo que se puede hacer, esto puede ser por la mañana, por la tarde, es tener un, uh, la, la rutina de escribir sus pensamientos en un papel. La mayoría de las personas tienen entre 50,000 hasta 60,000 pensamientos por día. Son muchos, ¿verdad? A veces no, ni es, estamos conscientes de todos los pensamientos que tenemos. Entonces, uh, tomar 10 o 15 minutos diario a escribir. Y después, al fin de 7 días, mira atrás lo que escribiste el lunes, el, el martes, el miércoles. A lo mejor vas a ver que son los mismos pensamientos. Pero por lo menos vas a ser más consciente de sus pensamientos. Otra idea de concentración que me gusta hacer es leer libros. No por la, la computadora, sino con un libro verdadera, verdadero. Ok, so leer más. Por lo menos, si uh, ustedes pueden leer 20 minutos diario, se recomienda, pero más mejor. Uh, cualquier tipo de libro, pero que no sea en la computadora. Um, eso es una manera de enfocar la mente, es como un ejercicio. Y el equivalente de hacer media hora de yoga, pero por la mente. Y además, pues sabemos que leer diario para los niños es la mejor manera uh, para ellos de aumentar su vocabulario. Bueno, entonces yo leo. Y no enfrente del televisor, con el teléfono, todo eso, no. El libro y nada más. Uh, bueno, yo sé que mucha, mucha gente le gusta hacer varias cosas, varias cosas a la misma vez. Eh, hablan, hablan por teléfono mientras que están manejando el carro. Mm, están, yo tenía un um, compañero de cuarto cuando estaba en la universidad y ella nunca dejaba de estudiar. Entonces ella estaría ahí a la estufa cocinando y en un mano eh, removiendo la sopa y con la otra eh, tenía un libro en la otra mano y estaba leyendo y estudiando. Me sorprende que nunca hubo un, un incendio, la manera que ella cocinaba haciendo dos cosas a la vez. Eh, lo falso es que la gente piensa que son, es más, son más productivas haciendo dos cosas a la vez, pero es una mentira. ¿Por qué? Porque la mente realmente no se puede concentrar en dos cosas a la misma vez. Y cuando uno comparte su atención en dos lugares, se puede resultar que uno no se acuerda lo que estaba haciendo. Se puede tener accidentes. Pues, claro, en el, en el carro es muy peligroso estar usando el teléfono y manejando a la vez. Por eso en, en muchos estados... Es contra la ley hablar por teléfono y, y manejar a la misma vez. Bueno, entonces, eh, intenta de, de no hacer dos cosas a la vez y ten eh, la idea en tu mente que sí vas a haber tiempo para hacer todo lo que necesitas hacer. Y si no es tan importante, puede esperar, ¿ok? Pero haz una sola cosa a la vez y verás la diferencia. Bueno, ya hablé un poquito de la, de la importancia de, as, de hacer las cosas que se requieren mucha creatividad y mucha concentración por la mañana. Y yo diría que hay que elegir el momento adecuado para hacer las cosas. Por ejemplo, a las 10 de la noche cuando estoy muy cansada, no voy a empezar a escribir un libro, ¿verdad? Um, o a las 8 de la mañana no voy a empezar a mirar la televisión porque no estoy cansada. Entonces, ustedes saben su horario, su vida, cada vida es diferente, pero quiero que ustedes pongan un poquito de atención de cómo vas a elegir cuando haces las actividades del día. Ahorita les quiero hablar de la organización. Yo no sé, pero para mí siempre eh, me cuesta organizarme bien, pero yo sé cuando tomo el tiempo 
para organizar mis libros, mis papeles y todo, eh, yo puedo concentrar mejor. Es muy difícil para mi esposo, por ejemplo, eh, cuando yo tengo mis libros y papeles por toda la mesa, para él, él no puede concentrarse. Entonces, primero él quita todas mis cosas y luego se puede poner a trabajar. Entonces, por la mayoría de, mayoría de las personas es igual. Eh, está mejor organizar bien el lugar donde vas a estar trabajando antes. Cada cosa tiene su lugar, así decía un primo mío. Entonces, uh, haz lo que necesites necesario para arreglar sus cosas, comprar un, un archivos, un, un estantería para los libros, lo que sea. Ahorita, yo no sé cuántos de ustedes han dejado de escribir a mano, pero es una actividad eh, muy bien para la concentración. Hay muchos estudios que muestran que cuando uno escribe a mano, que la mente está más enfocada. Eh, es una lástima hoy en día porque yo veo mucha gente que van a las conferencias y llevan su, su ordenador y empiezan a tomar notas en, en la computadora en vez de un papel. Eh, los estudiantes igual están perdiendo eh, la habilidad de escribir rápido. Yo siempre prefiero escribir a mano. Cuando yo escribiendo un libro, no lo hago por computadora. Eh, la primera copia de mis libros siempre los hago a mano. Um, se dice que los estudios muestran que se va a recordar de los datos, de las palabras, mejor cuando se escribe a mano. Hay una conexión entre la mente y la mano. Entonces, les recomiendo de escribir a mano para mejorar la concentración. Now, eh, por cierto, cuando uno está motivado, cuando uno está haciendo algo interesante, es mucho más fácil concentrarse que cuando estamos haciendo algo aburrido. Es más eh, frecuente que la mente se va a ir de acá a allá pensando en otra cosa más interesante de lo que, lo ten lo que tenemos enfrente. So, eh, espero que ustedes tengan un trabajo que les interesa, que les motiva. Por lo menos, si el trabajo no es algo interesante, cuando llegas de la, a la casa y tienes tiempo a hacer sus cosas que les motivan, así es el tiempo de practicar la concentración. La mente quiere resolver un problema o, o lo que sea. Yo siempre estoy más motivado, pero al mismo tiempo tenemos que usar la disciplina. Otra sugerencia para mejorar la concentración es de jugar al ajedrez. Este juego, eh, dicen los estudios, que es una manera de uh, usar la concentración y para, es una manera de analizar la situación, tomar decisiones. Entonces, es un juego que es muy bueno para fortalecer la concentración. Yo recomiendo uh, una vez por semana eh, de jugar al ajedrez. También hay club de ajedrez en muchas escuelas para los niños porque se sabe que es un juego que ayuda a los niños a tomar decisiones, a usar la concentración. Bueno, hay muchas ventajas de jugar el ajedrez. También uh, otros juegos um, son una manera de concentrar. Yo no recomiendo juegos de video. Yo estoy hablando de los juegos como jugar a las cartas, otros juegos así, pero no utilizando video y televisor, todo eso. Bueno, ahorita les voy a dar uh, un, una manera de concentrar. Es un ejercicio de concentración. Solo le va a costar unos 5 o 10 minutos para terminar. Y se, se enfoque en la respiración. Bueno, primero uh, hay que buscar un lugar oscuro donde no hay nadie y es un lugar tranquilo. Siéntate cómodo en una silla. Yo prefiero cerrar los ojos, pero también les pueden dejar abiertos. Van a poner la mano derecha encima del estómago y van a respirar profundamente. Respira como si tu estómago fuera un globo y lo tenías que llenar con aire. Entonces la mano se va a sentir que el estómago se va respirando y agrandeciendo como un globo. Y luego, uh, respira, inspiras, así, como el globo se llena de aire y se 
Esto se puede hacer por 5 o 10 minutos o más si quiere. Es simplemente usando la respiración como tu objeto de concentración. Otro ejercicio que me gusta hacer es buscar un objeto. Yo prefiero algo en la naturaleza, como una planta, la hierba, un árbol. Y te vas a enfocar en este objeto por 5 a 10 minutos, solo en este objeto. También se puede usar una vela con, eh, encendido y vas a mirar la vela por 5 a 10 minutos. Al principio de mirar el objeto, se puede tener un papelito y un lápiz. Y cada vez que te notas que su mente se va distraído, vas a poner una marca en el papel. Vas a ver día tras día que las marcas van disminuyendo. Menos y menos marcas con más fuerza de concentración. Y así es una manera, manera de medir si estás mejorando en su concentración. Y claro, les voy a recomendar la meditación. Hay muchas formas de meditar. Podemos hablar horas y horas sobre la meditación. Pero simplemente la meditación se puede empezar en tiempo corto, 10 minutos, para tener éxito. Te sientas en un lugar tranquilo, sin nadie al principio. Cierras los ojos, respira unos 10 veces, muy fuerte, y así te deja ir la mente. Now, lo que va a pasar seguramente es que llegarán los pensamientos uno tras otro. La recomendación es que no hagas caso a los pensamientos, ni intentas parar los pensamientos. Deja que los pensamientos pasan por la mente, no los hagan caso, se van a ir, se van a ir. Y así llegarás un momento cuando te das cuenta que no hay pensamientos ni nada. Y hay muchas experiencias que puedes tener. A, a veces me siento como estoy saliendo de mi cuerpo, que, fue, que puedo ver todo el salón donde estoy sentado. ¿Okay? So, puedo leer el libro uh, sobre la meditación. Es muy bien para el cerebro. Bueno, eh, yo les prometí de hablar un poquito de astrología. Esto es lo que voy a hacer. Ok, el mes de octubre, ¿qué va a pasar? Pues primero, el evento más importante es que tenemos una nueva luna que empieza el um, 9 de octubre. La luna nueva en Libra. Libra es el signo del balance, armonía, relaciones, el amor. Entonces, en la luna nueva, es oportunidad de escribir sus deseos, sus metas por el mes. Y se deberían estar relacionados con Libra, las relaciones. ¿Cómo vas a tener más amor en tu vida? ¿Cómo vas a mejorar sus relaciones amorosas, sus re relaciones con las fam fam familiares, los amigos? Um, balance, ¿cómo vas a buscar más balance en su vida, entre el trabajo, los amigos, entre todo lo que tiene que hacer. Hay que haber un, hay que haber un balance entre todo lo que hace. So, con esta nueva luna en Libra, tiene la oportunidad de mejorar todas esas áreas de su vida. Y esto es un consejo de escribir eh, las metas en un papel y el día 9, para celebrar la luna nueva, los pueden sacar el papel y leer sus metas por el mes de octubre. Bueno, amigos, ya se está acabando el tiempo por esta semana. Les agradezco por haber escuchado y les invito a visitar nuestra página de web en intuitiveschool.com y también ir a nuestro Facebook en Spirits Journey Radio. Pueden dejar comentarios, preguntas y a lo mejor contestamos su pregunta en el próximo programa. Adiós. The path of self ascension is a conscious decision that brings your life experience into alignment with soul consciousness. The rare gift of an active approach to living in the heart and manifesting the present moment. 
Sri Ramka and Kira Ra invite you to visit Self Ascension Magazine, a free online self ascension hub that lifts your spirits and frees your heart to soar. On the Self Ascension Magazine website, you can read Sri and Kira's perspectives on what's happening today. Discover a daily meditation and weekly practice. Watch special video and audio clips. Follow Kira Ra's messages from the Archangelic Realm and learn about upcoming events or courses. Relax and enjoy a visit to Self Ascension Magazine online at www.shriandkira.com. Explore, participate, and unfold this rare treat for yourself. Remember, that's shriandkira.com. Oneness Talk Radio. Hip, fresh, fun. Tune in to an honest portal of positivity 24-7. Experience unique talk radio from all around the planet, perfectly mixed with music that enchants your soul. Discover oneness moments as you relax into three to five minutes of divine inspiration. Claim your oneness today. Oneness One world, one voice. Expand your vision. 